But Mr Lamy, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, first of all, if we look at these uh, preferential trade agreements, why do you think they are becoming more complex and why are they not working as well as they might? Well, we've, uh, we've uh, researched this uh, very much. We've looked at the numbers, we've looked at the facts, and we've just published today a sort of analysis of what this reality is. And the reality is not exactly what uh, we thought it was. Uh, because on the one side, the trade and tariff part of preferences is not such a big problem. But what we see rising uh, is a danger of these preferential agreements segmenting the regulatory regimes, entering into bilateral regulatory agreements, sort of harmonization, and thus creating a spaghetti bowl of regulatory regimes. And the more bilateral you go in regulatory regimes, the less multilateral you go in, multilateral, in regulatory regimes, the more there's the risk of diseconomies of scales, mm -hmm. i.e. instead of uh, opening trade globally, segmenting trade globally. And that's a risk which uh, had not appeared that well so far and which our numbers, our researchers uh, are now uh, pointing at. Mm. Now global trade overall is slowing. Where are the areas that you're particularly concerned about and where is this coming from? I would not agree that global trade is slowing. Global trade is uh, growing. So at the, least the, the, way gro we the growth, it, however, uh, is slowing. Is the growth of world trade is not slowing. We've had a big, I mean, we had a big drop uh, uh, during the economic crisis, but now it's back to a sort of, you know, six, seven, eight percent a year, which is a, a multiple of, uh, of world growth. Now, what we point at is a danger, not that growth of trade slows, but that the efficiency of trade is hampered by these new segmentations of regulatory barriers. Now, we've got the so various sovereign debt crises, both in Europe and, and potentially in the US as well. What impact do they have on, the, on, on trade and on these preferential agreements and indeed on growth of trade? Well, it's, uh, it's a very indirect impact. Uh, these uh, these uh, sovereign uh, debt uh, doubts problems uh, do not impact directly international trade. They impact consumers, business perceptions about the future, they impact investment decisions, and hence, as a result of their impact on macroeconomic growth, they may impact trade. And what about but it's only through a reshaping of anticipations and a sort of, you know, precaution mm. for the future increasing because of debt doubts may be a serious problem for trade, but it's a sort of second or third round effect. And does this perception affect protectionism? Is that your concern? Well, inevitably, the lower the growth, the more problems on the job markets, and the more protectionist pressures. And the US is a, an excellent example of that. Uh, now, protectionist pressures is one thing, caving in protectionist pressures is another thing. Now, so far, so far, we've had these protectionist pressures, but governments overall have reasonably well resisted them, although true. In recent times, we've had a few uh, worrying spots on our uh, X-ray picture, which uh, which deserve the attention, not to the point of you know being uh, worried about uh, going to hospital, but still a few recent worrying developments, which of course will only improve if growth, notably in developed countries, uh, picks up. Thus easing this very bad situation on the job market in uh, developed countries. Okay. Pascal Lamy, thank you very much indeed for joining us.